five, four. We have main engine ignition. Two, one, and lift off. Lift off of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket. Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining me today for your online coffee break. Today, I'd like to welcome my special guest, Mark Peller. Mark is the VP of Major Development for United Launch Alliance. He began his career as a propulsion engineer supporting the space shuttle program. From there, Mark joined the Boeing company and moved to the Delta program, where he was involved with the development of the Delta IV launch system. Mark is with us today to discuss ULA's future launch system, the Vulcan Centaur rocket. Online Coffee Break. Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure, Chuck. Well, it is a pleasure to be speaking with you. Now, now, Mark, you have an incredible background as an engineer in the space industry, which I just think is awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background and sort of what drew you into this field? Sure. So as you mentioned, I have a technical background. I'm an engineer. I've had the opportunity to work on a lot of different uh, launch vehicles, starting out with the space shuttle program and uh, got involved in propulsion technology. So that's my background and worked in supporting the main propulsion system on the uh, space shuttle orbiter. So I had, that was, you know, that's, that's a highlight of my career of, of a many, but one I will always remember and had the opportunity to work on the shuttle for about nine years and then moved on later and got involved with the uh, Delta rockets mm -hmm. and actually worked uh, for a number of years in the development of the Delta IV rocket, which is you know one of the two primary product lines that ULA has been uh, flying here for the last 12 years. And so worked on development of the main propulsion system for the first stage or booster of the Delta rocket. Mm -hmm. And as we started to fly that rocket in 2002, uh, got more involved with other aspects of the system beyond just propulsion. You know, the avionics or electrical systems, the software, the structures, and then I had the opportunity to become the overall chief engineer uh, for the Delta program. And then uh, a few other assignments in between, but then about four years ago, got a call from my boss and he asked me if I wanted to lead the development of a uh, brand new rocket that we, over a period of time, will transition uh, from Atlas and Delta that have served us so well, but transition to this new rocket. At the time, it didn't have a name. And now, as you know, it, it has evolved into the uh, Vulcan Centaur system. So I am the program manager uh, for Vulcan Centaur, and I've been doing that for over four years and uh, continue to work on that as we work toward our first launch of the new rocket in uh, early 2021. Well, Mark, that is a, just a fascinating career. And, and I have to admit, I, I got to uh, witness a, a Delta IV heavy launch uh, last August with the um, launch of the Parker Solar Probe. And it was just so breathtaking. Uh, the one thing I love is I'd love to talk a little bit more first just about ULA, United Launch Alliance, because one thing that I, I was really impressed about is how your CEO, Tori Bruno, after each successful launch, and there are many, he even on Twitter just shoots out a number of the launches. And I think you've had, uh, ULA has had 125 consecutive launches and a 100% success rate. Uh, for those of our listeners who might not be familiar with ULO, can you just give us a general uh, overview of, of what it is? Sure. Uh, well, first, just an update. Earlier this month, we had our 132nd uh, consecutive uh, nice. launch, all with 100% mission success. Congratulations. And that is really unprecedented in this industry, mm -hmm. and, you know, domestically or abroad. No one has enjoyed a record of such great success. So, you know, ULA, United Launch Alliance, we were formed 12 years ago. We're a joint venture of the Boeing and Lockheed Martin companies. The Delta program um, had been developed by Boeing and the Atlas program by Lockheed Martin. And the two companies decided to join forces and, you know, bring the best of the best <laughs> and offer world-class launch services uh, for our customers, both domestically and around the world. And when I say launch services, we don't sell rockets. 
we sell rides to space. <laughs> and so, you know, we build the rockets, you know, people tell us what their payloads are and we make sure that they're all ready to fly on the rocket. And we, uh, we call that integration and, and make sure they're all prepared and have to have a successful mission. We actually, you know, operate the rocket, we launch it, and then we release their payloads where it needs to go. And so that's what we do as a launch service provider. We support a variety of customers, and so national security space, and that's usually something for the United States Air Force or one of the, um, like the National Reconnaissance Office. Uh, we do a significant amount of work for them. We say civil, and that comes in many forms. Most of that is NASA-related. So we launch various spacecraft for NASA for Earth observation to learn more about Earth or to study the weather patterns on Earth and so forth, as well as NASA exploration. So everything that's driving around on Mars has been launched on an Atlas or Delta vehicle and a number of other uh, spacecraft that have gone to Mars and every other planet actually in our solar system to help us under better understand our solar system that we live in. And so we've launched all that. And an exciting part of our NASA business that has expanded in recent years is involvement in International Space Station, mm -hmm. as NASA has looked to commercial providers to support the, call it the logistics of Space Station. And so we have flown uh, three missions to deliver cargo, and this was done on our Atlas vehicle, to the International Space Station to support the astronauts. So this could be some, you know, things very simple like food and water and, and basic necessities to mm -hmm. more, you know, other things like spacesuits or experiments or other things they do to support them on the International Space Station. And continuing with that commercial theme that is very exciting for us is that NASA's transition to using commercial providers to launch U.S. astronauts to and from the International Space Station, right. uh, something that we haven't been able to do domestically here since the retirement of the space shuttle. We've been dependent upon launching crew on Russian launch vehicles. Mm -hmm. And so later this year, we will start launching um, our customer actually is the Boeing company on their Starliner spacecraft. We'll launch it on top of an Atlas rocket from our launch facility at Cape Canaveral. And we'll start sending U.S. astronauts back to the space station on a domestic uh, launch vehicle from U.S. soils. Well, Mark, that is so exciting. I was going to say, I'm very excited about your next generation rocket, the Vulcan Centaur that you talked about. Can you tell us a little bit more about what led to that and what we can expect from it? So Atlas and Delta are great rockets and they have served us very well. But you know, these first flew 17 years, almost 17 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, and technology has continued to move forward. The state of the art has continued to move forward. You know, I don't think you'd be satisfied if you know you were driving a car that was based on a 2002 design, you'd want no. something better. <laughs> yes. And so you know, the intent here is to bring the best of Atlas and Delta and all of our experience launching these, building and launching these rockets and that has afforded us this unprecedented record of success, but bring in new technology and develop a rocket that really supports the you know, evolving needs of our customers in those markets. You know, their, those customers' needs are different here than they were 15, 20 years ago when mm -hmm. we embarked on development of those systems. Right. And so what we're going to do with Vulcan Centaur is, you know, everything that those two rockets do in one and to be even more capable, to have greater capability. And so that's a real advantage for us is to be able, you know, over a period of time after we introduce Vulcan Centaur, We'll progressively move our customers, our regular customers that we work with. We'll progressively move them, you know, from Atlas and Delta to Vulcan. And over a period of time, we'll phase out those other rockets and we'll focus our entire enterprise, you know, on building and launching uh, Vulcan Centaur rockets to support our customers. Vulcan's a really high-performance rocket. Um, you saw the Delta IV Heavy mm -hmm. um, launch Parker Solar Probe Plus that you mentioned earlier. The Delta IV Heavy is basically kind of, as you saw it, it's kind of three rockets joined together. We right. have a basic Delta IV, and to create that heavy capability, we strap three of those boosters or first stages together, and it's mm -hmm. extremely capable, but, you know, it's a, it's a complex endeavor, and it's very different than, say, other missions we have to launch on a Delta or Atlas rocket. And so the neat thing about Vulcan is we can launch anywhere from a you know, a relatively small spacecraft to something very big or on a mission that's very challenging from a performance perspective like Parker Solar Probe where we launched 
something that actually is orbiting the sun, right. we can all do it with the same basic rocket. And that is really significant for us. And it's really the improvements in technology and propulsion and, you know, to have a higher performing rocket and materials, a lighter weight rocket that allows us to put more of the weight, if you will, into the payload. Mm -hmm. And those are some really the keys that are uh, critical uh, to Vulcan and which will really differentiate it in the marketplace. Well, Mark, one thing that I, I was reading, too, I believe it uses uh, methane as fuel. Is that correct? That is correct. It will use technically commercially available liquefied natural gas. Mm -hmm. Now, liquefied natural gas is over 95% methane, but and that is ah. you know pretty innovative. A rocket of this scale has never been fueled by liquefied natural gas. We've used you know, other fuels. Liquefied natural gas is very high-performing. But the other benefit of it is it's commonly available. Right. You know, sometimes when we use some more exotic rocket fuels, you know, we're the only user of those and they're hard to get, they're expensive, they're hard to handle. Mm -hmm. And we're leveraging all the existing infrastructure that's around the country for use of natural gas, whether it's in a gas or a liquid state, to power this rocket. And what we found is it's actually a really good high performing uh, rocket fuel. So it's a real win-win. Some people have tinkered with, you know, fueling rockets with natural gas. Mm -hmm. um, we're not just tinkering, we're doing this. <laughs> right. And this will be the largest rocket that's ever flown uh, fueled by natural gas in the first stage of it. That'll be incredible. Now, can you tell me too, I, I believe you have uh, some really unique reusability that's associated with the Vulcan Centaur program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, the whole key here, I mean, we're providing a service and you know, we have to look at everything we do in terms of the value the customer derives from that. Mm -hmm. And so part of that obviously is performance and lower cost and you know, being able to launch when they need us to when they're ready. And so our perspective on reusability is really focused on the economics of it and doing so in a way that doesn't detract from the primary mission. So we don't have to add systems to the rocket or fly the rocket in some different way that detracts from their mission. In other words, they can still bring the biggest, their big spacecraft and we can still take it exactly where they want to go. And so how we do that, and I'm going to be a little technical here, sure. but we call it, you know, non-propulsive downrange recovery. <laughs> and so basically rather than, you know, using the engines to land the rocket, it's going to land without propulsion and it's gonna land downrange. In other words, we're not gonna go release the spacecraft and then try to use all this fuel to fly back to the launch pad mm -hmm. because that fuel is fuel that could have been used to get, you know, either carry a bigger spacecraft or get that spacecraft further into space. Exactly. So basically from the customer's perspective, you know, up until we'll release them, it's it's like any other any other ride we've ever given them. You know, we give them high performance, we get them where they wanna go, what happens there, and then we get to the engineering part of it is, then the first stage of the rocket, rather than flying back, will then re-enter. We will separate just the aft end of the first stage of the rocket. And that's where the engines are and all the systems, the inner workings of the rocket, the really complex, high value portion. Right. And that will re-enter, it will be slowed down by a parachute, and then it will be recovered downrange. So the most valuable portion of the rocket will recover, and we'll do it in a way that doesn't impact the primary mission of our customer. And as I said, the whole focus is on the economics. So we'll reuse the most valuable portion of that, and we'll do it in a way that doesn't impact the performance of the rocket. So part of the booster, the tanks, which are really low cost, those will be expended, but the high value portion will bring back, we'll do some refurbishment, we'll make a new set of tanks to it, and then we'll fly it. That is a planned upgrade of the Vulcan rocket. When we first fly in 2021, it will not have that feature. That is something that we're working on on-ramping in the coming years after Vulcan Centaur first flies. And we call that smart reuse. You know, and it's smart, it gets back to the, you know, the basics of, I explained, the economics. Do it in a way that reuses the most valuable portions of the rocket so we can offer lower cost launch services and does it in a way that doesn't impact the basic performance or the, the mission in terms of the uh, customer's perspective. See, Mark, I think that is incredible. And, and of course, the play on words, it is smart. I mean, something like 65% of the booster cost is in the engines that you're going to be recovering, I believe. And I think that's just incredible. That's correct. 
Now, I, I believe you mentioned the timeline a little bit. Can you get a little bit more, uh, lastly, about just the timeline for when we can expect to see Vulcan Center over the next few years? Sure. So Vulcan Centaur, our first flight will be in the second quarter around April of 2021. And uh, we're going to fly a couple times in 2021. And then over the years, we'll progressively you know, ramp up production and launch of Vulcan Centaur. Nice. And as I said, we'll move customers from Atlas and Delta. So you'll still see Atlas and Delta flying for the first you know, few years of the 2020s until where we're fully transitioned over uh, to Vulcan Centaur and flying you know, about 10, 12 times a year on Vulcan Centaur. And then, as I said, we have several planned upgrades to Vulcan Centaur as we go forward there, one of those being smart reuse. Well, Mark, this is incredible. Certainly an exciting time and uh, the future coming up for space travel. Uh, Mark, I want to thank you just for sharing information about the Vulcan Centaur program. And just thank you so much for just taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Really appreciate it. It is my pleasure. There's nothing I enjoy more than talking about rockets. And, of course, talking about Vulcan Centaur is, uh, is the best. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Online Coffee Break. Wow, the future development of rockets and space travel is just amazing. I'd like to thank Mark for joining us today. If you'd like to learn more about ULA or the Vulcan Centaur rocket, just go to their website at ulalaunch.com. If you'd like to comment on today's topic, just go to our website, onlinecoffeebreak.com, or give us a call at 317-862-4700. We'd also love it if you'd follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Online Coffee Break. And of course, be sure to share this episode with your friends or rate us on your favorite podcast application. Thanks again for joining us today. See you next time. God bless.